Michael, thanks very much for coming in. Um, Nanoco is the world's leading supplier of cadmium-free quantum dots. Um, can you start by just explaining exactly what a quantum dot is? Um, Nanoco makes quantum dots. Quantum dots are fluorescent semiconductors. What's unique about these materials is, first of all, they're very tiny, uh, between um, one and 10 nanometers, which is about 100,000 times thinner than the width of a human hair. And what's uh, fascinating about these materials is by changing the size, we change the color that they fluoresce. So for example, if you took a very tiny golf ball and that golf ball had a diameter of one nanometer and we grew that golf ball from one to two to three to five to seven nanometers, by changing the physical size of that quantum, of that crystal, we change the electronic properties, which in turn changes the optical properties. So size determines the color that these materials fluoresce. So when you talk about quantum dots, you're talking about a material where size uh, determines uh, fluorescence. You get a uh, what's called a quantization effect. So the technology can be applied into uh, a number of different verticals, um, display, um, lighting, uh, healthcare applications, and also solar. Can you just talk us through each of those and, and also give us an indication on the timescales in which we should expect each of them to be commercialized? The first market to come good for us is displays, and specifically high-end 4K TVs, which is where the large uh, the TV companies, the OEMs, people like Samsung, LG, tend to launch their newest technology. And Samsung has led the field with their SUHD range of TVs, which is now, which are now uh, the high-end versions, are equipped with cadmium-free quantum dots. So TVs, and televisions, and displays are where this thing has taken off, um, and then it's starting to move. We we announced last year we had developed a lighting division. Um, that's moving forward. We have four products. Uh, one, uh, or four product areas. One is uh, horticultural lighting, so tuning the wavelength, giving plants very specific wavelengths of light to aid their growth using less less energy. Uh, signage. So very specialized signage for emergency conditions or things where you want uh, specific exit signs. Uh, daylight simulation. So we're, we're able to accurately recreate daylight conditions for, for workers who never are in uh, factories or you know, in, in uh, work areas where you don't uh, see daylight down to uh, all the way through to uh, beauty uh, cosmetic uh, masks. Uh, where people are using light for skin treatment to help get rid of uh, cosmetic uh, blemishes. So these, you know, first display market, lighting is coming on. Um, you have the life sciences further out, and I didn't mention the solar industry. These materials are very good at absorbing energy, which makes them very useful for uh, turning and converting into solar cells. But really, there's not a weak that doesn't go by where a new application comes in. I mean, the materials are what we call a true platform technology. Uh, so you recently um, announced that you are moving to a non-exclusive uh, arrangement with Dow uh, within the display vertical. Uh, can you just explain the rationale for that move and the impact that it's likely to have on Nanoco going forward? You know, the reason for that was the market pull is great. You see Samsung moving, you see the other OEMs all moving, anyone making LCDs moving into quantum dots. And we had an opportunity by going non-exclusive to open up other channels into that market. So not only Dow, but develop other licensees, sell product directly. And at the same time, we've uh, increased, uh, we've through process improvement, we've increased the amount of material we can make ourselves in our Runcorn factory. So we're now able to produce really useful volumes that will go in and satisfy niche markets in the display industry. If there are OEMs that want 10, 20,000 square meters of display film a month, we're able to supply that, where that may be a bit small for the large players in the industry. So who are your key competitors across both um, cadmium-free and cadmium-based quantum dots? Uh, and what specifically is Nanoco's competitive advantage? Sure, so on the competitors, um, 
we have, uh, for Nanoka, we have competitors that are specific quantum dot competitors, and then you have other technologies that you're competing. So if we focus initially on the, the quantum dot competitors, you have cadmium versus cadmium free. And we, we being now Nanoco and Dow, are the only commercial suppliers of cadmium free quantum dots. Nanoco Dow are the only commercial uh, suppliers of CAD free. Uh, moving on to cadmium, the two, I would say, credible and really the you know, most credible uh, competitors are two U.S. corporations. One is an Enosis out of uh, California, Northern California. The other is QD Vision based in Boston. And can you give an overview of the legislative uh, process regarding the banning of cadmium quantum dots? Sure. So um, the, you know, we announced, or it was in public that last year, I think last May, European Parliament voted overwhelmingly in favor of banning cadmium or withholding, you know, holding up the Rojas legislation, which heavily restricts cadmium. I think it was 633 to 16. Uh, so that's Europe, and, and what about China? Likewise, in China, China has the Chinese uh, Rojas, which has the exact same limits set for cadmium, mercury, uh, chromium, uh, and lead. You know, it, you know, cadmium will be phased out. It's just a matter of time. And then finally, looking at the financials of the business, you're in this transitional phase whereby you're moving from milestone payments for uh, commercialization towards volume shipments. Um, can you just give us an idea of what investors should expect from Nanoco over the course of the next year in terms of milestones and news flow upon which to gauge your, your progress going forward? Uh, I think it's a great question. I think one of, you know, one of the challenges that investors have had over the last couple of years um, is lack of news flow. You know, there's been a huge amount happening in Nanoco. The business is driving forward very aggressively. You know, in our, our other sectors and with, has been with Dow and Display. But because of the relationship with Dow, it's been very difficult for us to speak about anything um, in the display market. Now that we have moved from exclusive to non-exclusive, -ex we'll be able to talk and be a little bit more open. Not about stuff relating to Dow, they'll always have to say, but the other things. So I think what investors should be looking for is uh, proof of the Dow relationship working. So first royalty checks coming in. Um, we'll be able to say that we, we've you know, royalty is, is coming in. To remind you, we get paid quarterly in arrears. So we would expect, uh, you know, Dow's facility is now up and it's running and it's sampling um, uh, qualification materials to the major OEMs. So we'd expect commercial sales to start soon and royalty to come in. So that's something investors should be looking for. Um, new agreements in the display sector, other licensees or direct sales, you'll start to see announcements around that. Uh, lighting, you'll start to see uh, sales in lighting as well as product launch and announcements on, on, on products for lighting. And then in uh, solar and life sciences, uh, because those are businesses that are a little bit further out, partnerships. So uh, in the past we've been very successful, as you mentioned, with Milestone, but joint development, non-reoccurring revenue partnerships with companies who are experts in the field, so either uh, uh, you know, diagnostic company, pharma company, who we will partner with to help bring that fluorescence cancer imaging technology to the market. That would typically come with some form of milestone payments as we deliver the technology. Likewise with solar, we're not in a position to deliver solar cells into the market on our own, but we have a very strong technology platform which we would deliver with a partner. So partnership revenue, proof of proof of Dow relationships and royalty coming in, new licensees in the display sector, as well as direct sale uh, type relationships with OEMs and film coders in the display. So there should be a lot of news going forward. We're really, the company is very energized and there's a lot going on.